Welcome to African News Television News Update, bringing you update from the African scene, the foreign scene, and the world of sport. My name is Deborah Eze. Many thanks for joining me. On this update today, we begin from the financial technology industry. Africonia Bank and Sparkle Bank announces strategic partnership and the launching of Payclusion fintech platform. The Africonia Sparkle Bank partnership brings together deep skills in business and technology, products conceptualization and development, technology strategy and deployment, brand marketing and organizational change management to help support clients to engage in their transformation successfully. Payclusion, which is a new fintech platform, that operates exclusively online without traditional physical branch networks. Additionally, Sparkle Bank will become part of the Africonia ecosystem, a network of partnership that provides decentralized finance, proprietary access to tools, technologies, and delivery capabilities that help Africonia team deliver breakthrough client results. We believe this partnership will generate industry-leading technology, widening its product and platform, said Dr. Chancellor Nzewa, Africonia Bank's founder and president. With offices and services location in Canada, Comoros Union, Nigeria, United Kingdom, United States, Middle East, Malaysia, Suriname, South America, Switzerland, Tanzania, and the added capabilities of hundreds of Africonia Bank and Sparkle Bank's employees. This partnership will allow us to drive far-reaching business impact for our clients, he also added. Meanwhile, the Independence National Electric Commission has lost no fewer than 9,836 smart card readers in over 42 attacks on its offices and staff in three years. Also, more than 1,149 persons, including INEC employees and security officers, were killed in the three elections held in 2011, 2015 and 2019. Ballot papers, cubicles and other materials were similarly destroyed. Last Friday, an INEC worker, Antonin Quarry, was shot dead by gunmen while conducting the continuous voter registration in the Hite Uboma local government area of Imo State. A viral video showed the hoodlum forcing registrants to lie on the ground while destroying registration materials and vowing that election would not hold in the southeast. Following the violent assaults on its assets and staffs, the electoral body has expressed fears over the 2023 elections, stating that there will be no results as polling units where violent incidents were orchestrated. And still in Nigeria, the management of Chrisland Schools has explained why it had to suspend some students over a sex tape which went viral on social media. Some students from the private school located in Victoria Garden City, who went to United Arab Emirates for the World School Games in March, were involved in immoral acts in a trending video on social media. The school's explanation is coming after the Lagos state government ordered that all branches of the school in the state be shut down. Surprisingly, the school was silent on the action taken against the staff members in whose care the children were at the time of the incident during the trip to Dubai. The management had earlier suspended an 11-year-old female pupil said to have been gang raped, claiming that the girl took part in a truth or dare game in Dubai, where the students represented the school in the World School Games between March 8th and 14th, 2022. The school announced the girl's suspension in a letter to her parents describing the conduct as improper behavior. However, the mother of the girl has called the Nigerians to help her seek justice for her daughter, who she said the school was trying to silence the daughter in order to cover up the moral incident. In a statement made on Monday, a member advisory board of the school, Aki Fadei, said it was scandalized and distressed over the issue, adding that it meted out the measures reprimands to them to instill a sense of discipline as is deterred to others. He added that it was also to caution students on the need to remain on the path of resisting wrong influences. And still on the African scene in South Africa, President Cyril Mafosa has declared a state of national disaster in South Africa. This comes a week after terrible floods left at least 443 people dead in the Durban area on the East Coast. The cabinet met in special section last night and decided to declare a state of national disaster which was a televised address on Monday, referring to the situation as an humanitarian disaster. Some 10,000 troops have been deployed to the affected areas to assist the overwhelmed relief efforts. The week-long downpour has led to deadly floods and last night in Kwa, Zulu, Natal, where most of the casualties have so far been recorded. According to the National Meteorological Institute, the rainfall has eased since the weekend and no further flooding is expected in the coming days. 
thousands of people have been displaced. Some areas have been without water and electricity since Monday. And moving on, terrorist group Al-Shabaab has claimed responsibility for a mortar fire attack on Somalia's parliament Monday that injured at least six people during a joint section. Explosions were heard in the media of the parliamentary section, while several people were injured, but no elected officials were hit by the Sharpenel that landed in the fortified airport compound near Parliament in the capital Mogadishu, officials and eyewitnesses report. Parliamentarians were due to set dates for votes to appoint the residents of the two legislative chambers the next step in a long delay process to elect a new president to lead the country. The upper house will vote on 26th of April and the lower house following day to appoint their respective leaders, officials said. And away from that scene onto the foreign scene, New Zealand unveiled new sanctions on Tuesday targeting Russia's largest bank and financial institution in its response to the invasion of Ukraine. New Zealand continues to condemn Putin's war and supports the International Criminal Court's investigation into the atrocities committed against the citizens of Ukraine. New Zealand has said the Central Bank and the Sovereign Wealth Fund were among three core government financial bodies affected, as well as eight of Russia's largest banks and seven other with ties to oligarch, the defense sector, and the annexation of crime. Moving on, the International Monetary Fund will consider providing quick financial assistance to debt boarding Sri Lanka following representations by India, Sri Lanka's finance ministry said on Tuesday. A delegation headed by Sri Lanka's Finance Minister Hali Sabri kicked off formal talks with the IMF in Washington on Monday for a program the government helps to help top up its reserves and attract bridge financing to pay for essential imports of fuel, food and medicine. Sri Lanka's devastating financial crisis has come as the effects of COVID-19 has created mismanaged government finances and has rising price of fuel served foreign reserves. Still on the foreign scene, Britain is not going to be looking at how to help Russia, a senior minister said on Tuesday when asked about the prospect of swapping pro-Russian police convictor Medvedchuk for two British fighters who were captured in Ukraine by Russian forces. The Britons appeared on Russia State TV on Monday and asked to be exchanged for Medvedchuk, a Ukrainian ally of Russian President Vladimir Putin, who is being held by the Ukrainian authorities. When asked whether a possible swap was something the government would get involved with, Britain's Northern Ireland Minister Brandon Lewis said, We are actually going through the process of sanctioning people who are close to Putin regime. We are not going to be looking at how we can help Russia. An update from the sports scene, Manchester United forward Cristiano Ronaldo has announced that one of his newborn twins has passed away. Ronaldo and his partner Georgina Rodriguez said they were expecting twins at the end of October 2021. Manchester United offered their support for Ronaldo in a post on Twitter on Monday evening. The club statement reads, Your pain is our pain, Cristiano. Sending love and strength to you and the family at this time. And finally, Manchester City is ready to trigger the 75 million euro release clause in Erling Haaland contracts in a bid to bring him to the Etihad Stadium this summer. Pim Guardiola's side have been leading the race to sign Haaland this year and his release clause means Borussia Dortmund are resigned to losing the striker this summer. The 75 million euro fee, which equates to 62 million pounds for Haaland, is widely considered to be below market value, but reports in the English media on Tuesday suggest City will have to pay the 21-year-old, who is represented by Mino Vajola, more than £500,000 per week. Haaland has missed the number of games with injury this season, but he has still scored 25 goals in 26 games to help Dortmund to second place in the Bundesliga, though they must win their game at Bayern this weekend to retain any hope of winning the title. And that concludes the news update today on African Air Television. You can catch up with our news and other programs by subscribing to our YouTube channel and following all our social media platforms on Join Team, Pangram, Instagram, and Facebook in their respective order. Once again, I'm Deborah Eze. Bye for now.